Today we will be working on a 2004 Honda Pilot. It's going to be the spool valve assembly. It's right where the oil filter is located. As you can see, there is oil everywhere in the wheel well. So start by lifting the passenger side front wheel and removing the wheel. Lifting this side was more than enough. It's going to give us enough room to work on the valve spool. Basically what we're going to be working on is the valve spool assembly seal and it's been leaking. The valve spool itself doesn't look like there's any issues with it so we're going to keep the same uh, assembly unit. Now we got the wheel off and um, you can clearly see that there's like going to be oil everywhere. The valve spool assembly basically is where the oil filter is connected to and the seal of that has failed so it's been leaking uh, consistently and as you can see to remove it is not really that difficult. Uh, there should be just three bolts and it's going to be one right there, this one right here on top and then there's a third one right there. So we'll be starting taking this out. So first things first, we need to add an oil drip pan in the bottom because you will be losing some oil. So be prepared to catch those um, fluids and recycle properly. Now we're ready to start. So first thing, we need to remove the oil filter and you will be losing oil from here. So, uh, just be very careful because the fluid, I mean the oil may be hot. Now that the oil has drained from the part, uh, we need to remove the oil pressure switch connector. There is another wire connector on top, it's the solenoid. Uh, the solenoid doesn't have to be, uh, the solenoid wire doesn't have to come off because it will give us enough space to uh, dangle the, the, the spool valve once we remove the bolts. But there is a connector to it right there if you just follow the ca cable connector to the top if you want to remove the cable connector. But for this particular purpose, it wouldn't be necessary. It's very difficult to get a good angle to it, so um, you just follow the, the wire connection and it will be just a few inches away from the uh, connector itself. Now we'll be ready to move, remove the bolts from the spool valve. So basically there's three bolts to it. Um, they're 12 millimeter bolts, just loosen them up. Once you remove any kind of bolts in any part of the car, keep track of where you remove the bolt first because they may not have the same length. This in particular will have two similar bolts and one longer. The first bolt I removed and this bolt is actually the same size. And then this third bolt is actually the longer uh, length compared to the other two. Here you can see the three bolts. One's longer and then the other two shorter bolts. Just make sure you don't mix them up. Just remember when you're bolting it back down, the top closest to the crankshaft will be where the longest bolt go. At this point, just firmly grab the valve spool body and then just um, shake it a little bit and it should come out relatively easy. Once you successfully remove the valve spool body, you will see some oil spilling in the area. 
and also at this point you will see the gasket stuck to the uh, the engine frame carefully inspect the area that you removed for any damage that may have been caused by the removal or just in general because the car is relatively old now what we're going to do is match the uh, uh, gasket that we bought the gasket that I bought was a Felpro brand available at your local hardware store I mean auto supply store and once you've matched the um, old one with the new one it looks like it's the same start peeling off the old gasket the actual gasket is on the valve spool assembly it's not on uh, the engine block it's been so old and it's been so worn out that it's already baked on to the um, uh, the engine block carefully remove the old gasket and as you can see it's been so it's been a while that it's flat and what you call very brittle Once you have removed the old gasket, uh, carefully clean the mating surfaces of the valve spool body and the, um, the engine block. So make sure you clean the contact areas. Uh, keep it away from any kind of residue, any kind of debris, any kind of gasket that may have been left onto the surface. Once you've cleaned the surface, the shape of the O-ring or the gasket is really unmistakable. See, it, it just goes in one way, so it all falls into place. There's a filter screen in one particular area, and the depression or the depression should be facing out. So whatever um, uh, bulge that filter screen has, it goes into the spool valve. So Make sure it's snug. Uh, since it's a newer O-ring, it may have been deformed from uh, during manufacture and just make sure it's sitting properly. There's grooves to it that allows you to put it in place. And it's always good to uh, lubricate the surfaces of the O-ring before applying it into uh, the surface. Once you got all the gaskets set in place, carefully uh, place it back into the engine block. Uh, be careful not to uh, move the O-ring or any pint or any part of it so that it will not pinch once you tighten the screws. So at this point, you can choose whatever screw you wanna uh, put in first. Uh, I choose, uh, what do you call this? Once you put one in, uh, hand tighten and then the rest is just basically the same way Now that you have the valve spool seated properly, it's time to reconnect the connector. We only, since we only removed one connector, uh, just replace that. And basically the torque of this valve spool is 22 Newton meters. Now that everything's bolted down and checked, uh, I replace it with a new oil and new oil filter. So basically, this is a video for changing the valve spool gasket on most J series engines. It may some they may have some variations on the four cylinder engine. So 
Um, but basically, it's about the same procedure and same process. Thank you for watching. If you have any comments, just shoot a comment down below and have a good day.